Hello and welcome one and all. This is Old School Gamer 1971 here. Millie, Lloyd, everyone, hope you're all having a great day. If you would, please like and comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Support the channel and help it grow. Today's thoughts is on Shenmue 3. I've been playing this game for around 3 hours and this is what I Shenmue 3 is an action adventure developed by WiseNet and released in 2019. It's a direct continuation of Ryo Suzuki's story to find his father's murderer in 1980s China. It's good that the original creator of the Shenmue saga, Yu Suzuki, is on board. He saw it spanning several games. The original two games were developed by Sega AM2, which Yu Suzuki was part of, and was developed for the Dreamcast in 1999 and 2001 respectively. For its time, the original Shenmue was in fact the most expensive game ever developed, clocking in at a then massive 47 million US dollars for both production and marketing cost. This also covered the foundations for Shenmue 2. Despite having a cult following that has gone from strength to strength over the years, Shenmue 3 has spent over a decade in development hell. Yu Suzuki is the father of Shenmue. The early games were directed, written and produced by Yu Suzuki. It was always planned for there to be at least four entries into the franchise. Renowned for a level of detail that had not been seen in games of that time, critically acclaimed did not equate to sales and was seen as a commercial failure. Yu Suzuki tried over the next few years to pitch several ideas to Sega including online multiplayer games. Ultimately, it slipped into development hell. Sega never outright said that Shenmue was over. In fact, they had said that they were open to a new entry and were still interested in the series. While still employed by Sega, he started his own development company, WiseNet. In 2011, Suzuki left Sega and the following year he suggested that Sega should license the game to his company, WiseNet. To develop Shenmue 3 independently. Both Microsoft and Sony were both interested in the sequel. In 2015 Suzuki appeared on the E3 stage during Sony's press conference promoting a Kickstarter for Shenmue 3. It started off with the fastest to 1 million dollars in crowdfunding. It ultimately didn't make the money, falling short by some 2.8 million dollars just over. Deep Silver and Sony supported WiseNet throughout development. After several delays, it finally released this year. The game picks up directly after the events of the second game. Ryo Uzuki has made his way to China searching for his father's killer, Landy. As the game opens, Ryo meets with his travelling companion, Shen Ling. He finds out that their meeting was in fact fate, which a village legend foretold of their coming together. The saga continues as Ryo and Shenhua go deeper into enemy territory, getting ever closer to that final showdown with Lan Di and new antagonist Niao Sun. Your journey starts in Beilu village in Gulin. The second area, Neiwu, is a riverside village it is more prosperous with more shops and souvenir stores, hotels and temples. The third area, Beishar, has a siege minigame. So is this Shenmue 3 another chapter? Or is it Shenmue 3? Where are the hell are the prequels?
One of the first things that I noticed was how like the original this is. This is both good and bad. Good because as a player of the original entries, bad because some of the original problems is here. It does feel a little indie. Do not get me wrong, I had great fun playing this game, but I do think that being in development hell that long may have made it impossible to live up to my expectations anyway. Graphically, there is improvements. The character models are vastly improved, if a little wooden when compared to other open worlds of today. At the same time, I am glad that it looks that way, as if it looked too modern, it would have felt disconnected to me. The world also has never looked better, the combat is fluid and being able to train your character is also kind of cool. This game had a much smaller team than the previous entries had and they brought people in to help with parts of the game. This looks and feels like an indie title, as the other games were cutting edge of their time. Do not get me wrong, the game doesn't look bad and you can tell that the team behind the project took time to craft the game and the worlds they're in. Overall the graphics are good, but just don't go expecting them to be groundbreaking how the originals were. <laughs> Okay, so the original had an amazing voiceover. Yes, the technology held it back a bit, but the voice actors done a fantastic job and made that game highly enjoyable. Fast forward and the technology is great, but the voice actor for Ryo just doesn't quite sound right. I am a little disappointed, but it doesn't exactly break the game neither. Everyone else has sounded great that I've spoken to so far. Technology has advanced so much since the first game, released some 20 years ago. But they have also kept the original flavour that the game had. This all works well and certainly I am happy with the results. To see the advancements is great. To see the story continue directly from the second entry is also great. To me I wanted to see a sequel that used today's technology that didn't step so far away from the original that it was unrecognisable. This would all be for naught if the script and story were crap. Fortunately, this is all good here. Along with a great story, this makes this easy to get into and a fantastic play for a fan of the original. Today more than ever before, the stories in games are becoming ever more important and the fact that this game is in there no longer gives a game a pass. Here, they could have messed up, but having Suzuki, the original creator on board, makes continuity easier but not guaranteed, so again here in sound, all good. I played Judgment recently and a few Yakuza games in the last year. Along with this, they have one thing in common, no vehicles for traversal. So you are moving around on foot, so make or break here. Here it is all good. It does run smoother than the original and the fast travel slash time travel makes this easier to get around and sometimes not so much standing around. Perfect for gamers with limited time. One of the things to me that sets this from the open world of the time was the time wasters. The gambling slash mini games, ways of making money, money to buy stuff and play arcade games. This stuff is all back and it is a great way to waste time. If like me, you just want to while away your days training Ryo, it's a great way of getting food along with those special moves. Well special if you have them compared to when you don't. Now I will be honest, I do think the lack of Sega licenses is blatantly missed. Having the likes of Space Area, Outrun and Hang On, like in the earlier games, is really missed here. I get licensing and stuff, but it is so missed. I am glad that the arcades remain, 
but I am a little more reluctant to waste my money now I have not got my favourites to rely on. But with a bit more in-depth combat, it's all swings and roundabouts. You can tell within 5 minutes that this was a labour of love. Suzuki made this with the same enthusiasm and gusto he had when creating the original games 20 years ago. You can tell his passion has never dwindled and his vision unwavers. Knowing that this continues that story made this easy for me to be drawn back into this world. Following up the story straight after the other game ended, no time has passed, no change to location which does suggest that whether he made this game in 2002 or 2019 made no difference. This was always the planned direction the story was supposed to take. It was good to see this and certainly retains the feel and more importantly the atmosphere of those games that we have come to love. One thing that did trouble me for a while is the whole fast travel slash time travel. The old me would have been like but the idea is you're supposed to fill your time with stuff around the town. It encourages you to explore the world around you, to find your own favourite wastes of time until 8pm meeting in a parking lot across the other side of town. Nowadays me is like, we don't always have time to do that, sometimes we only have 5 or 10 minutes to play. So this is perfect for those with a love of games and a lack of time. This game is great for fans of the original. One of the things I do think is, Yakuza is probably the better game for younger players. If you're into retro and slash or Shenmue fan, then get this game. Just don't go expecting great leaps over what you've already played, but expect a respectful sequel to the series. That might sound a bit harsh. But having played Judgment just a couple of weeks ago, it was hard not to play one game off the other. Suzuki took great effort to drag this from its development hell, with on again or off again sequels, online multiplayer that never saw a release, mobile games that lasted about a year, Sega hot and cold on the franchise. He then had trouble raising the funds for the game, and finally after all these years, Shenmue 3 is here, and it does seem like a miracle it ever released at all. For all that I have said, I actually really like the game, its story drew me in and for all of its flaws, I had great fun playing this game. Its world is beautiful and colourful, pleasing to the eye. It does hearken to the past, but I would say that it is a big part of the game's charm. My advice to anyone interested is, buy the double pack first. The originals will tell you if you should play this. This has too much of a story for you to just jump in and get the most from this epic saga. So Shenmue 3, another chapter, this most definitely is. Gorotsuki to nani ga atta n desu ka? Hanashite ageru kara asonde te. Mochiron katanake dame yo. If you're hearing this, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for your support. Give it a thumbs up and comment if you enjoyed the video. Please share everywhere as it helps the channel grow and puts a big old smile on this old face. Leave your suggestions down below in the comments. Enjoy your day one and all. Old School Gamer 1971, signing off.